National Assembly calls for coexistence of new and old Naira notes for transactions. CJN was on attack on judicial officers. Ocean government reiterates commitments to well-being of residents. While on the foreign scene, it trickles into Turkey and Syria over earthquake devastation. Good evening, and we are glad to have you join us on the major reports. I am Olubomi Ajiboye Agwola. The National Council of State has advised the federal government to make new narrow notes available or recirculate the old notes to ease the suffering of Nigerians nationwide as a result of scarcity of cash. The council, presided over by President Mohamed Buhari during its first hybrid meeting this year, however expressed its support for the government's new monetary policy, but tasked the Central Bank of Nigeria to take urgent steps to arrest the scarcity of cash plaguing the country. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abu Bakr Malami, disclosed the outcome of the meeting to newsmen as it was accompanied by the governors of Lagos and Taraba states, Babajide Sonwolu and Darius Ishako, respectively, and presidential spokesman Femi Adeshino. Disclosing the final resolutions of the meeting, Malami said the two major issues deliberated by members were the level of preparedness for the upcoming general elections, saying both the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, and the Inspector General of Police, Akali Baba, have assured of adequate readiness. Speaking on the new monetary policy, Malami entered that the council thanks the CBN to ensure the recirculation of adequate cash in the system to alleviate the harsh realities trading the policy. Meanwhile, the leadership of the National Assembly has emphasized the need for the Central Bank of Nigeria to allow the old and new narrow notes to be used concurrently to cushion the hardship being experienced by citizens. Senate President Ahmad Lawan said this while fielding questions from journalists in Abuja. He said Senate initially felt that the monetary policy is not a bad idea, but felt there is no need for any time limit while allowing the old and the new narrow notes to coexist until the old is phased out. Lawan, who was accompanied by the Speaker as a representative Femi Bejabi Amina said, they advised that any policy that will be introduced must have a human component that will make it according to him. The resolutions of the two chambers of the National Assembly with respect to the redesign of the currency and the current and the crisis of exchange or swap of the old currency with the new one have been delivered to the president to take a decision that will ease the problems of Nigerians. More new Naira notes and as well to allow the coexisting of the old notes in order to alleviate the suffering of the people. Our financial expert Al Aji Rauda Adebisi gave the advice after featuring on OSBC Current Affairs Program Saturday morning trades. He faulted the implementation process of the Naira redesign policy, which has brought untold hardship on Nigerians. He speaks further. Well, the interpretation of the courts, like we all know, is that uh, uh, we should, the, the old money and the new money should uh, coexist until the old one, we are, we are, we are, until we are able to face out the, the old one. But from the look of this, I'm not sure Central Bank has accepted that uh, instruction. Because uh, the way we are looking at it, they have not made any pronouncements that, okay, we agree with, uh, this is the step we are taking. You know, even the Council of State, they had a meeting, was it not yesterday, about uh, the currency swapping, that uh, the non-available availability of cash in the country. And there are two, they, I mean, they mentioned two ways uh, the CBN governor could take. And the first one was that uh, he should print more money. Uh, the second one was that it should allow the hold money and the new one to coexist. But towards evening yesterday, there was another report from the CBN governor, whereby he said that uh, they don't have sufficient paper to print 500 and 1,000 Naira denominations, and that's a problem. But what we are saying as members of the, of the public is that 
if he can't print 500 and 1,000 denominations, let him print 100 naira and 50 naira denominations to serve the public. And if eventually, then he mentioned something. He said they have uh, made a request for more paper to be supplied to the mint to be able to print much money, and that we it's going to take a long time before the paper comes in. So definitely, one would have expected that the CBN government should come out that the new money and the old money should coexist and they are able, they are able to print more money into the circulation. In the meantime, the federal and state governments have been called upon to ensure a holistic approach to end the crisis engineered by the Central Bank of Nigeria monetary policy with particular reference to redesigning of the currencies of the country's currency. The Association of Veteran Journalists or State Chapter made the call in a communique issued at the end of its general meeting in Oshobo, the Ocean State capital. The communique titled Seven Nigeria from Imminent Collapse drew attention to the pervading fuel shortage and its effect on the socio-economic lives of Nigerians and the security crisis it has generated in different parts of the country. The veteran pen push has called for an urgent meeting of all critical stakeholders to explore ways of assuaging the plight of ordinary Nigerians and halt the nation's descent into anarchy. The community frowned at what it described as the nefarious conduct of some bank officials and marketers of Prima Motor Spirits. The federal government has been called upon not only to retain but sustain subsidy on premium motor spirit, also known as petrol, which is the only benefit agreeable to all Nigerians, irrespective of their status. A social critic comrade Wale Oyeni made the call while speaking to OSBC News shortly after featuring on a current affairs program Saturday morning trade. He disclosed that the hike in price occasioned by fuel scarcity is a ploy to remove subsidy on the product and a way to add to the suffering of the masses. One of the factors, many factors are contributed to it. One of the factors is that the federal government wanted to remove or had removed or as last the subsidy. That's the cause. They didn't want to put subsidy into the shop. You know, NMPC is the sole importer of the fuel in Nigeria. And we take crude oil to abroad and they get refined one to Nigeria. They subsidize it. The federal government has either removed completely or slashed the subsidy. That's the cost. You know our refineries do not work. All the refineries are down. They don't work in Nigeria. You see, we plan something and the idea of removing subsidy is the main cost. Very negative, extraordinary negative impact on us. The only thing we can say is to plead with the federal government, by the government, to let subsidy stay and, and, and then patch the loopholes. British Deputy High Commissioner to Nigeria, Mr. Ben Lowley Jones, has urged Nigerians to respect the electoral process. He gave the advice in Lagos while urging politicians ahead of the upcoming elections to resolve their grievances in a peaceful manner, avoid hitting the polity and inciting violence. Mr. Lowley Jones further enjoyed them to avoid vote buying and respect the electoral process as the new technology will be deployed to ensure that their vote counts. According to him, it is imperative for politicians and people to do the right things as the UK government is committed to issuing visa restrictions where it is aware of attempts to subvert the democratic process. He urged the public to cooperate and work with the INEC, noting that the Commission has the capacity to deal with challenges facing it. The Supreme Court's ruling nullifying the candidature of Bashir Machina in favor of Senate President Ahmed Lawan has been described as a constructive legal decision that can stand the test of time. The former chairman, Nigeria Bar Association, Oshobo branch, 
Mr. Awoni Yala besides this while speaking with OSBC News after featuring as a guest on a current affairs program, Saturday Morning Trade. The lawyer, who was also a national officer of the MBA and the lecturer, also threw his weight behind the nullification of the judgments of the Federal High Court and Court of Appeal over the matter. He speaks further. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Olukayode Olu Ariwola, says the Supreme Court's silence on attacks on its judicial officers must not be mistaken for weakness or cowardice. The CJN gave the warning in a statement issued by Dr. Festus Akwande, the Supreme Court's Director of Press and Information in Abuja. The statement is in reaction to the recent attacks on the judiciary by some groups of people over some recent political judgments delivered by the Apex Court. He warned the public to be mindful of their unwarranted attacks on judicial officers. He further said, certainly, every Nigerian citizen has inalienable right to express his or her opinion without any burden, but even in the course of expressing such fundamental right, people should be circumspect enough to observe the caution gate of self-control in order not to infringe on another person's right. I'll have to go back to the report on the candidature of Bashir Machina. The Supreme Court's ruling notifying the candidature of Bashir Machina in favor of Senate President Ahmed Lawal has been described as a constructive legal decision that can start the test of time. The former chairman, Nigeria Bar Association of Shubu Branch, Mr. Woni Yalabi, said this while speaking to OSB Senators after featuring as a guest on a current affairs program, Saturday Morning Trade. The lawyer, who was also a national officer of the MBA and the lecturer, also threw his weight behind the nullification of the judgment of the Federal High Court and the Court of Appeal over the matter. He speaks further. Well, my interpretation of it is simply this is a question of politics and law on a coalition course. So the Supreme Court is right. The two lower courts are wrong. The federal court was wrong to have entertained that matter. The court of appeal was wrong to have confirmed what the federal court did because originating summons was not the appropriate process to approach the court in that kind of issue because there are facts. There are even allegations of fraud. Even in normal, in normal civil cases in court, be it land matter, be it defamation, or any other thing. Once you raise the issue of fraud, you are raising the issue of a crime, and there are different types of standard of proof for civil case, for criminal case. Once you raise the issue of fraud, you are talking about crime. And so, there is a higher body on you. The proof must be beyond reasonable doubt. Minister of Information and Culture Al Ajilai Mohammed has commended the efforts of the National Population Commission for positively rewriting the history of the census in Nigeria through meticulous planning and massive deployment of technology at every stage of the national exercise. While inaugurating the Census Publicity Committee in Abuja, the minister lauded the commission for not only making efforts to conduct the 2023 census, but also laying a solid foundation for the seamless conduct of future censuses. The minister added that the enumeration area demarcation, which involves the division of the entire landmass of Nigeria into small enumeration areas that can be covered by a pair of enumerators has been carried out meticulously and digitally, adding that the products generated will be relevant for other planning purposes. The Commission's Chairman, al Haji Nasir Kwara, said the vision of the 2023 census is to produce not only accurate, reliable and acceptable census data, but also inclusive and user-friendly data that will be used by all segments of the society for development, 
planning and critical program interventions. Ocean State Government remains committed to activities that will bring support to residents of the state. Chief of Staff to the Governor, al IG Kazim Akhle, said this at the presentation of relief materials to victims of rainstorm and flooding in Ede Town. Said Adeboje reports. Ede, the country home of Governor Ademola Adeliki, played host to members of the Presidential Committee on Flooding Relief and Rehabilitation. They were there to grace the program where Ocean Emergency Management Agency will distribute relief materials to victims of various natural disasters. Speaking at the program, Chief of Staff to Ocean State Governor Alaji Kazim Akinleye noted that the Governor, Senator Ademola Adeliki, is highly touched by the natural disasters, including rainstorm, that affected the state. Alaji Kinleye, who was represented by Dr. Sadiq, noted that Governor Adelike remains committed to the well-being of all. Speaking in the same vein, the General Manager of Shun Emergency Management Agency, Mr. Amos Adejinle, appreciated Governor Ademola Adelike for always showing concern to programs that will enhance the comfort of the people. Mr. Adejinle noted that the relief materials in terms of food, roofing sheets, and other needs were distributed without political, religious, and tribal inclination. He implored residents of the state to further support the present administration. Now we should emphasize that, yeah, that the action and intention of the President of the Authority and the Nation in providing these enormous materials for the betterment of our people cannot be emphasized because it will go a long way in alleviating their sufferings and bringing smile to the face of suffering masses in this state and we cannot thank you enough in this regard. Earlier, the representative of the Director General National Emergency Management Agency, Mr. Said Akiyode, implored the beneficiaries of the relief material to use them for the purpose they were meant for. For OSBC News, this is Said Adeboje reporting. Vice President Yemi Oshibaju has identified the provision of social housing and affordable mortgages as part of the amenities needed for, to drive development and create employment opportunities for the Timi youths in the real estate sector. Professor Oshibaju who said this at the commissioner of Westlink Iconic Villa in Ibadan, Oyo State, commended the Odua Investment Company Limited and Chapter 4 Estate Management Limited for the noble project. Oluchi Amoda reports. The commissioning of the first phase of the Westlink Iconic Villa in Alakia, Ibadan, Oyo State Capital a joint venture between Odua Investment Company Limited and Chapter 4 Restate Management Limited witnessed the gathering of notable personalities, movers and shakers of the political and economic space, captains of the industries, opinion molders, among others. Speaking at the epoch making its president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo stated that in spite of the challenges bedeviling the country, Nigeria is slowly but surely ticking the boxes when it comes to the ease of doing business resulting in the country being one of the topmost hubs for business, trade, and investment. The Vice President who commended the efforts of the Board and Management of Odua Investment Company Limited and Chapter 4 Estate Management Limited for embarking on such a life-changing project reiterated the commitments of government towards creating an enabling environment to galvanize growth in the real estate sector. That the Nigerian diaspora has a crucial role to play in investments in our economy and that the investment prospects in our economy are great are great and though it may require some sacrifice the rewards are well worth it so the story of the west link iconic housing units here in alakia is a story of the triumph of ideas and a vision of private enterprise development and capital working seamlessly together. In his address, Governor of Oyo State, Engineer Sheyi Makinde, who was represented by his deputy, Mr. Adebayo Lawal, maintained that shelter is one of the most important basic needs of men, and that is why his administration wholeheartedly welcomed and supported the idea of the estate when it was muted in 2019. Coupled with the compelling need to address the housing deficit, which has greatly impacted the Human Development Index of Nigeria as a nation. I am happy to report that on a daily basis, 
we are beginning to see our vision of an unjustly lifted from poverty to prosperity materialized fast. In different parts of the city of Ibadan and the state, world-class estates of this nature are springing up, affirming the fact that our determination to take the state to greater heights is a realizable objective. In their goodwill messages, the representatives of Lagos and Ogun State Governors expressed satisfaction that the Board and Management of Oldwar Investment Company Limited is vigorously pursuing its mandate to be the engine room for the economic development of the Southwest region. Earlier in their addresses of welcome, Group Chairman of Oldwar Investment Company Limited, Otumba Bimbo Ashiru, and the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Chapter 4 Estate Management Limited, Mr. Shams, Ogumu Yuwa said the company plans to develop and build on existing partnerships to help meet the growing demand for modern and first-class properties and living environments. They maintain that the joint venture is a testament to the power to deliver a well-planned real estate project, both locally and through the relatively untapped Nigerian diaspora population. We are to look at a growth investment group are bullish about the immediate future of Nigeria real estate industry. As one of the largest holders of real estate assets in the country, we see first hand immense opportunities across the future commercial and industrial segments of the sector. We plan to develop new and build on existing partnerships to help meet the growing demand for modern first class properties, living environments. Nothing short of one million new homes should be built in Nigeria every year. This can never happen without the backing of various levels of government. The event climax with the commissioning of the Phase 1 Westlink iconic villa, Alakia Ibado, by Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo, who led other stakeholders to inspect the facilities. Oluchi Amuda, OSBC News. You are welcome to our sports segment. Nigeria's under-20 boys flying eagles have now settled down in Morocco's commercial and economic capital, Casablanca, for a one-week final training camp ahead of the Africa Under-20 Cup of Nations, starting next Saturday in the Arab Republic of Egypt. On more time, Adibodo has details of this and more. Adan Boso and his world are staying at a Novator Hotel just outside Casablanca and the head strategist is upbeat about the readiness of his boys to sustain their winning mentality when the tournament kicks off in nine days. Nigeria's first match of the campaign as they attempt an eighth continental title will be against Senegal's Cub Lions at the Cairo International Stadium starting from 9 p.m. Egypt's time on Sunday 19th February. The Flying Eagles two-time FIFA World Cup runners-up and one-time bronze medalist will then face Egypt, the host, on Wednesday, 22nd of February, same time, and at the same venue, and Mozambique on Saturday, 25th of February. All four semi-finalists at the 12-team championship in Egypt will qualify to fly Africa's flag at the FIFA World Cup finals to be staged in Indonesia on the 20th of May till the 11th of June this year. In the meantime, the Super Falcons will depart the country today for the Revelations tournament to be staged in Lyon, Mexico. The tournament is built to hold from the 15th of this month to the 24th in the city of Lyon, Guanajuato, Mexico. Host Mexico, Nigeria, Costa Rica, and Colombia are the participating teams at the tournament with the objective of preparing for the forthcoming FIFA Women's World Cup Finals in Australia and New Zealand this summer. Head coach Randy Wadron called up 23 players for the tournament, including the captain Onome Ebi, Spain based forward Asisato Shuala, and long time first choice goalkeeper Chiamaka Onandoze. The nine time African champions would play their first game of the tournament against Ost, Mexico, starting on Wednesday, February 15th, three hours after the opening match between Costa Rica and Colombia. Or Motayo at the bottom, OSBC News. While on the foreign scene, international aid has been trickling into 
parts of Turkey and Syria, where rescuers started to pull children from rubble in areas devastated by a massive earthquake that has killed over 24,000 people. The United Nations warned that at least 870,000 people urgently needed food in the two countries after the quake, which has left up to 5.3 million people homeless in Syria. The United Nations World Food Program has appealed for $77 million to provide food rations to at least new 590,000 people in Turkey and Syria. And that ends the major report on OSBC TV. It was edited by Adebari Ejimakinde. I am Olubumi Ajiboye Agola, wishing you a good night rest.